By the end of this video, you'll know how to professionally camera track so that you can place objects in a 3D scene. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. If you want to join and check out all of the amazing perks we offer, you can check out the link down in the description below. Hello everyone and welcome to 2025. I hope you guys are doing amazing in this new year. Now I've been streaming a lot more recently and you guys have pointed out in my streams, I've actually been doing a updated camera tracking process uh, that's a little bit different than what I've taught in the past. And so I wanted to make this video to go over my new updated method for professional camera tracking. It's the same exact one that I use on most of my client footage. So I'm so excited to share this with you guys today of course like always if you want to work along with us i'll have the footage to download down in the description below and then for my patrons i'll actually provide you all the files i'm going to be using today as well now we're going to be using a program called Synthize today to actually do our camera tracking. It's much better than the traditional Blender camera tracking route. And hopefully uh, by the end of this video, you'll understand why that is and why it's so much more professional for camera track. Now, full disclosure, they were a previous sponsor for the channel. However, today's video is not sponsored at all. They don't even know I'm making this video. However, I do have an affiliate link uh, from that previous video that you can use. That will be down below if you want to check Synthize out. I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps me a lot on the channel, uh, but just know that I am not uh, sponsored in any way in this uh, form of video. Okay, so here is the program. We can go ahead and hit new and we want to locate the footage that we're going to be tracking today. So here it is. We can open that up. It'll automatically pop up with this. You do want to make sure these settings are correct, but those look good. Let's hit OK. And now we have the uh, actual footage loaded into the scene. Okay, so here's the scene we're going to be camera tracking. It's going to be super simple since we have a really nice and flat floor as well as a lot of parallax data in the foreground and background. So it's going to give us a lot of information there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I like to come over here on the summary page. We're just going to hit fine tune and then everything else is totally fine for a scene like this. I'm going to hit this auto button. It'll go ahead and try to uh, calculate all of the things on its end and actually go ahead and give us our first solver. Uh, it's so much better than Blender, uh, just a one click basically solver. And so I'll show you how to get uh, some of the issues out that we do run into as there is some cleanup process that's still involved. But as you can see, we already have our error to a uh, basically a two pixel solver and so that's a horizontal pixel you can think of it as the exact same thing as a solver inside a blender and so we can try to get this number down as low as possible this is 1080p footage and so anything below a 0.3 is usually what i try to stick with uh, whether i'm in blender or synthize so we can try to go ahead and get that out first of all uh, up here i want to set this automatic to refine because we're in the refinement stage of this process you can see some of the uh results have actually not made it over here it's a flagged red so you can just go ahead and delete those as well uh, now next thing we need to do is go ahead and clean up some of the trackers you can come up here to the track settings go to clean up trackers it's also shift uh, C so that's what I'm gonna be pressing for the remainder of this uh, tutorial so we can select some of our high error trackers you can see in the screen down here we have selected some of the high error trackers by default it's set to 30 and so that's why I'm gonna leave it as we can go ahead and hit fix down here and we can come up and hit this go uh, to solve it again and you can see that's automatically got our horizontal horizontal pixel solve error below a 0.5 and so that's really good we're going to try to get it a little bit lower so again shift c that is to go to the cleanup trackers window we have two more in this higher uh, that i don't have to change this 30 number so i always like to uh, keep selecting this until there are no more larger than 30 so we can go ahead and hit fix again uh, i'm going to hit shift g is the uh, shortcut to actually hit this go button and so now we're at a 0.39 solver let's uh, shift c again we have one more so fix shift G we are lower now so shift C and there we go now you can see we have zero high error trackers above 30 and so that is really good now what we can do is I'm just gonna click and drag this number down and get like something like nine errors and stuff I do want to make sure that I'm not selecting a lot of tracking markers in the bottom especially on my ground plane uh, just because that is gonna mean that we're gonna have less data to actually uh, determine where the ground plane is if you come from different camera tracking software this is the exact same thing it's a huge balancing act and so you don't want to select too many but you also don't want to select too few and so nine is pretty good with how many trackers i see that we have uh, not selected up here so let's go ahead and fix that we can uh, shift g again to solve so now we're at a 0.35 let's do it one more time so we have two above the 12 pixel solver so let's fix solve it's the exact same process too uh, so i'm going to solve that again and then now we have zero. We can maybe push it down a little bit. Uh, we are at a 0.33 uh, horizontal pixel solver. And so that's fine. I'm going to push it down a little bit lower. 
and I do notice we're selecting this one down here. I don't want to have that selected if I uh, can avoid it, but it looks like it is the next one to go. So I'll just keep uh, pushing this number down. We'll go to a eight. So anything above an eight is what we're going to delete now. Let's fix that. Uh, Shift G to solve that. Uh, and there we go. We have a uh, 0.32 solve error. And so that's pretty good. I do want to come out throughout my scene and I will notice that we still have a ton of information in the scene these little X's and these little uh, green squares are uh, plentiful throughout our scene so I know we aren't losing and deleting good data into our scene okay so I'm pretty happy with a 0.32 solve error so now we are ready to go ahead and set up our ground plane and actually rotate in the scene we can come up here I like to go into the 3d tab so if you just hit the 3d tab you do want to make sure that you're pressing the actual wording not the actual button because if you press the button uh, it'll actually keep the same exact layout so again, just press the actual wording and then up here, we're going to go and change the layout to perspective for now. And then if you lock it, I know it's a little hard to see up here, but there should be a thing in the top left or middle of your screen uh, that has a lock button. So you want to turn the lock button on just so we're locked into the camera's point of view. And uh, there we go. We can see the scene is pretty tracked. Uh, now it went ahead and tried to adjust for the floor, what it thought was the floor and everything. It unfortunately could not figure out what the floor actually was. And so we need to go ahead and set this into the scene. Now there are many ways to do it. The easiest way I found is that to actually come over here to the side panel into the toolbar uh, toolbar so there is a grid button so we're going to click that grid button and we have this two facet verts and trackers that's what we're going to be using today to actually adjust the ground plane the idea here let's come to the very bottom in this mode section and just uh, change on the lasso trackers so that we can click and drag and select trackers uh, the idea now is we want to select every uh, single tracker that is going to be on our floor plane uh, just so we can uh, set those points to be on our ground plane so let's go ahead and click and drag and select uh, some of the floor markers that is looking good we can come throughout the footage there's some more over here so i'm going to hold shift and select these three and there are also two back here and i believe that is pretty much all of them these are a good amount of markers now depending on how many markers you actually have on your ground uh, you can of course select how many you have on your screen so here we go we have that set up now, if we hit this two facet verts and trackers, you can see it automatically set our little ground plane down here. So there we go. We can see our floor plane is matching much more closely to this plane on the actual footage. And so now let's go ahead and set up the rotation. You can see our rotation is a little bit off. And so all we need to do for rotations is we're going to select two points to be our axis. Uh, and so as you can see, I have two points and there's even a nice little uh, line in the ground that is uh, going to be awesome for us to kind of make sure our motion track is correct. But as you can see, these two are in line with each other. So I'm going to come with these two selected, uh, hit the same button, the two two facets, verts, and trackers. And you can see it goes ahead and align those into the scene like that. And then also I wanna go ahead and set up the origin for my scene. The origin is gonna be zero, zero inside of Blender. And so that's usually gonna be where you want to put uh, your CGI and stuff like that. So since I want some CGI, we'll say like around this area, I'll go ahead and select this one right here. This is on that axis, but it doesn't need to be, it can be like this one, for example, and it'll still work. Uh, but let's just go ahead and select that one. Uh, and if you have just one selected, you can hit that same button that we had up there two facets verts and trackers and there you go now you can see everything is set up that line is following uh, the real world line pretty well and then we have the zero zero point into the scene and so that uh, you might think is all that we have to do however there is still one more step that a lot of people miss inside of this process if we actually come up here we need to set the uh, make grid the ground. So if we click the make grid the ground button, now if we come back out into quad perspective, you can see that little dot we have is now at zero, zero. If you didn't uh, press that before, it wouldn't have applied. It would have just applied in the view down here, not in the actual world settings. And so just watch out for that. I've definitely not applied it before and rendered it into Blender and uh, it was all over the place. And so just make sure you hit uh, make grid the ground. Anyways, we are now ready to export this out to Blender. I'm gonna go up to file. We can go ahead and go to to export and then the nice thing about synthize is it's really easy to uh, use with blender we can hit this blender python script you can go ahead and save this wherever you want to save it okay so i'm going to save it here let's save the project and then very important down here you want to select your blender version if you're in a later version of blender uh, there might be a update with synthize so always just check this but uh 3.2 or above that is totally fine you can change some of these presets but the one i want to call attention to is down here i want to open in blender so i have that checked and uh, if you don't actually select the blender application file path and it won't actually open inside of blender this was an issue i was having uh you know a long time ago i was very confused 
confused why it actually wouldn't open inside of Blender, but uh, just know you have to actually go in here and paste in the actual file path that Blender is uh, downloaded into. And so just make sure you have that down there. Let's hit OK, and it should go ahead and launch Blender. And if we give it a little bit, we can see uh, what it actually puts inside of the program. So there we go. We have a new Blender scene set up. I'm going to go ahead and save the project. And so there you go. You can see we have uh, some stuff in the scene. You can see that the camera is actually tracked inside of Blender and everything is set up. Now, here are some kind of final steps I like to do to a tr uh, make sure the track is as accurate as possible and be organized a little bit more to get the scene set up for our CGI. So usually I come up here. I don't like uh, having some of these collections. So I'm going to delete the top three and just have the camera trackers uh, collection down here. Uh, I can go ahead and get rid of this light as well. We don't really need that. Uh, next thing I like to do is come here and I like to select both of the camera and the synthize world. If I hit M, I can add a new camera collection. This just helps me organize some stuff up here. So now I have two collections. I can turn off the trackers when I want. So as you can see down here, if these get annoying and in your way, you can always turn them off uh, real quickly. Also, if you want to select all of these, we're going to select hierarchy and we can come to the data properties. And if you hold alt, you can actually affect the size. Uh, and so I knew that was a super kind of contentious thing, especially if they're too big, something like this. It's always nice to kind of uh, change each size down like that to make it a little bit more manageable. So that's how you do that there. Uh, so I'm going to hide the there. And then, of course, we still have the camera and data inside of here. And so we have the synth out world. And if you need to select the camera, we can select the icon right there. Uh, anyways, we need to go ahead and set up the scale inside of the scene. This is something we totally could have done inside of Synthize. I just find it's a little bit easier uh, to actually visualize inside of Blender. And so that's why I do it inside of Blender. So we can go ahead. I'm going to add a cube. And by default, inside of Blender, a cube is about two meters tall. That is right here. And so as you can see, it's two meters tall. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to move it up one unit. So just going to move it on the Z one unit. Now you can see it's still two meters tall and uh, that is not two meters tall in our footage at all. It is really, really small. And so we need to go ahead and scale everything up so that this cube uh, basically represents two uh, meters in the real world footage that we see in front of us. So uh, let's go ahead. Uh, there is a synthize world button that is basically a empty that is parented to everything inside of the world, including the camera. And so instead of scaling the cube up, we want to scale the world up. And so that is, again, the synthize world. We want to select that. We can hit S to scale that up and down. We want to scale it up so it's about two meters. So somewhere like right there, I'm just guesstimating. If you actually shot your own footage, you can use your real measurements that you should have taken on the day. But that's how you use that. And that is roughly like two meters we'll say maybe a little bit like that uh, so there you go now the scene is set up correctly let's do a couple of checks uh, just to make sure the camera tracking is as good as possible some things that i like to do i like to go ahead and add a mesh plane we can go to edit mode and i'm going to go ahead and right click and subdivide and then if we hold shift r we'll just press that a couple times all i'm doing is just getting a grid so that if we go into the wireframe view we can scale this out, you know, maybe I'll scale it in the X like that. So now we have a little bit of a grid on the ground, just a very quick and easy way to uh, kind of visually see if anything's sliding around. Uh, now this process doesn't involve any lens distortion. That's usually done in the compositing stage. Uh, however, for scenes like this, uh, you don't really need to uh, worry too much about lens distortion unless you have a lot of stuff on the sides uh, of the frame and stuff like that. But just know there is a second layer onto this if you do want to get super advanced into some of the synthize uh, things to do inside of visual effects but yeah as you can see it's uh, tracking really really well on the ground I'll demonstrate it a, uh, another way we can go ahead and I'll add another plane but this time I'll scale that up I want to go ahead and start modeling out the scene say if I do need this scene to be modeled uh, you know say we're having some liquid uh, simulation go on top of it or anything like that it's very important that this is uh, not only rotated the right way but also a way that we can actually model it ourselves and so so there we go and so yeah so let's bring this out and then for these stairs i can uh show you a little bit what it would be like to model this out and see how well it sticks because this is another thing in, in motion uh it is very important uh to get these things accurate so as you can see we have these stairs modeled out and if i go ahead and play that everything is sticking pretty well as you can see uh, again this is 1080p footage and so it might be a little bit hard to tell of all the graininess and stuff back here but to my eye that is sticking really really well um and
and everything matches there. And so yeah, so there, those are a couple of tests I like to do with camera tracking. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, of course, we do have the floor set up in the plane, so I'll go ahead and do the monkey uh, like we had at the beginning of the video just to show that uh, something can stick on the ground. So let's go to the side view. I actually like to do the moving in edit mode just because uh, the origin is going to be a little wonky if we don't. So I'm going to hit A. We're going to uh, rotate this and then move that up just so that the monkey is like laying on the floor plane like that. That is looking pretty good. And the reason I did it in edit mode is now the origin is on the ground. So now I'm free to rotate the monkey like this and then I can scale up and it's always going to remain on the ground plane right there. And so that is exactly why I do uh, that process. So there you go. Here is the monkey and you can add uh, more monkeys, you know, and all of them should track onto the plane as long as you define some of those areas, even up here, if we did want to put uh, the monkey up here, since we've already uh, went ahead and modeled that, we can actually go ahead and duplicate that up and just make sure we place it on the floor plane up here. So like right there, and then we'll just place that monkey over here and it should all track, especially since these are par parallel and they're flat as well. So there you go. You can see everything is tracking well. These are just, again, a couple of the tests I like to do just to make sure the track is set up as uh, correctly as possible. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it. All I wanted to talk about today, it's a super simple process, uh, very flexible for your needs, depending on what you're actually uh, looking for. Uh, but also just know there's a lot more that you can do with Synthia. So definitely make sure to go check out my affiliate link down in the description below. I'd greatly appreciate it if you uh, looked at the program and considered uh, downloading from there. It helps me out on the channel uh, if you do. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.